Hello and welcome everybody. It's your boy King Demps here. Now I was talking mad shit on Kenny S's AWP tier list, so I thought, what the fuck? I've got to put my mouth where my mouth is. It's right here, and I fucked that saying up. What I mean to say is I got to put my money where my mouth is, and I've got to do my own AWP tier list so that you can all roast me like I roasted Kenny S's. Now, uh, the caveat is I've gone for a slightly different tier list here. Like, I haven't included all the same players that he included. Um, I've basically gone for a pre-made one that was already on tier maker. But this seems to be, um, from what I can tell, I had a quick skim of it. This looks like a complete kind of list of AWPers who you might know or might be relevant in sort of 2021. Although I've just noticed it's got Mertz on there. And he retired and then only just came back from Valorant. So, yeah. Um, I'll be straight up with you, there are going to be some AWPers who I am going to put in the don't know category. Uh, and as with the Kenny S tier list, I'm trying to do this with the AWPers peak in mind. Without further ado, let's get stuck in. The first AWPer on this list is Snatchy. Obviously currently playing for Wiesler Krakow, um, previously of a go, previously of Virtus Pro, and my boy is a C tier AWPer. Um... We haven't seen too much of Snatchy playing in Tier 1. Basically just Snatches of it. Ay. But when we have seen Snatchy play Tier 1, he's not really impressed me. He kind of seems to be a bit of a Tier 2 farmer who, when it comes to Tier 1 play, can't translate. And there's actually quite a lot of AWPers out there in the scene that are like this. Um, they're going to absolutely ruffle stomp like Tier 2, Tier 3 teams. But then when you put them against Tier 1 teams who are a bit more disciplined who use their utility better, who just in general, I think, deal with the concept of there's an AWPer here and understand how to deal with the round when they know where the AWPer is. Yeah, a lot of these players just don't translate. And I think, unfortunately, Snatchy is one of those players. He is still relatively young. He's 24 years old. So it's not as if it's not as if he's definitely never going to like hit a tier one level. There probably is still maybe a bit of time. But yeah, I'd say he's been around long enough. Yeah, sorry, Snatchy, bro. But you're going in my C tier. Now, next we have Device. Obviously, one of the most storied AWPers of all time. A multiple major winner, major MVP. Uh, only second to Device in most MVP medals in CSGO. I think we have to put him in the S tier. I think there is an argument to suggest that Device at his peak is not the level of skill of someone for example like a simple but i think i think it would be unfair to knock device because maybe his raw skill or his explosive kind of power isn't quite the same as like a simple or a ziwu i think a device at his peak in terms of pure effectiveness i.e how efficient he is with the orb how many kills he gets how he locks down areas of the map We've seen, you know, from, from history and from device interviews and stuff like this, that he's a very scientific AWPer. Like, he uses heat maps and stuff. He approaches the game in a very analytical way. And I think that reflects in his play. He's incredibly effective and efficient. And I think you've got to put him in S tier. I think you just have to. At his peak, he's one of the most effective AWPers we've ever seen in this game. Yeah, you could probably say in terms of, like, pure raw mechanical skill maybe he's an a tier or not an s tier but it, you know his resume speaks for itself he's one of the best players to have ever touched this game he's one of the most successful he deserves his s tier placement in my opinion next up we have searson now searson's one who i could put him at the bottom i think of a tier or the top of b tier i think for now, I'm going to put him as like a bottom A tier AWPer at his peak. Searson, obviously, during the online era when Big became the best team in the world for a short period of time, he was a very, very key aspect of this. And even to this day, Searson is an absolutely vital cog in the Big machine. They need Searson to perform if they are to win series and win games. I think his absolute peak that we saw from him in that sort of online era with Big was... It was very consistent. It actually reminded me in some ways of someone like Device. I felt like it wasn't necessarily the flashiest orping style, but it was very effective. And I think that for me is what kind of 
pushes him slightly up into that a tier i would say in terms of like raw mechanical ability and skill i probably would say he's a b tier AWP at his peak but i think his sheer effectiveness i think his understanding of how to get the most out of himself as an AWPer, it seems to be a pretty high level and so i think just that peak we saw like i say that few months where sis and did look like one of the best players in the world i think it was in 2020 yeah, I think Searson has to be be going in the A tier. He um yeah, he gets the nod from me. Next up is Poison, and Poison is gonna go in the B tier for me. I think Poison is kind of the antithesis to something like a Searson. I think he's very explosive. I think he's very raw and mechanical. I think sometimes Poison's effectiveness is hampered by the fact that he doesn't always play the percentages in my opinion i think sometimes you'll see poison put himself in a wide angle because he's like yes yeah, he's gonna get the kill and be unexpected and but actually it's a low percentage play and more often than not he's gonna die from it i think in his uh complexity tenure we didn't see too much of the kind of peak poison particularly in the back end of the complexity tenure obviously you know there are rumors behind the scenes and there were kind of like little cheeky inklings that maybe he wasn't the best teammate wasn't the most motivated had some attitude issues <laughs> but i think poison is absolute peak i think he is too mercurial for me i think you could argue actually his absolute peak raw skill probably deserves to be put in the a tier yeah i'm even starting to doubt my placement here now nah, i think the resume we haven't seen when I'm thinking of this Orpus peak, I'm thinking of their peak like across a whole tournament, not in like one singular game. Slightly different from how I kind of viewed the Kenny S tier list, but you know, whatever. I think this is my fucking tier list. I'm going to do it how I want, all right? And I want to take it like, let's take their peak tournament performance. And I think Searson's peak full tournament is going to be better than Poison's peak full tournament. There you go. I've said it. I think Poison's too inconsistent. Nikodos, um, I'm going to put him in the B tier, kind of, uh, you know, I'm going to put him um, ahead of Poison for now, but but I, I kind of have them uh, on the same level, really. I think Nikodos is um, a very, like, unique AWPA. Like, I have never seen an AWPA who is so willing to whip out the Deagle when that's his secondary and just run around like it's a fucking pistol DM. Guy is a bit of a nutter. It's hard to say exactly where his peak is because I think Flames are so weirdly all over the place and inconsistent. It's hard to pick, like, a tournament performance where I can say, yeah, I see this is replicatable. I see this is something that Nikodos could do. You know, his, that's his peak tournament. I could see him doing that. And also, I think Copenhagen Flames are, like, really... I think there's two things, actually. I think, one, they're very reliant on Roy to make space and to be like a battering ram and to be like an opening aggressive entry kind of person. And two, I actually think they're also, and this kind of contrasts with what I've just said, but they're very important as a unit. I think the way they play off each other, the team play, the understanding of the game from a five man perspective is, is so important to their gameplay. It's almost hard to say how good is Nikodos versus you know, some of these other players. Uh, I also just haven't seen as much of Nikodos as I have some of these other players, but what I have seen, my man's going in the B tier. Cirk. I think Cirque is going to go at the bottom of B tier for now. I think Cirque is one of those AWPers whose peak is massively overrated because he's so quick and flashy and kind of like, watching him is a very visceral experience you you're like feel like you're there in the moment like oh my god he's moving so fast look at him go when in actuality i think his peak effectiveness is probably you know i put him in a very similar category to poison flashy explosive yeah on their day like when you when you catch him on the right game they're gonna 30 bomb you but i think against the top tier of opposition deeper in tournaments they're nowhere near as effective and I think for that reason, looking at their peak performance over a tournament, I think they go in the B tier. They're not uh, They're not on the same level. I'm actually going to put Nikitos down here. They're not on the same level as Searson. Next up, we have Crucial of Endpoint. Um, I'm going to put him in C tier. I kind of see him as a similar player to Snatchy. I think he kind of farms stats against like tier two, tier three. 
um, often not that great against the better teams, and just in general, like the peak I've ever seen from Crucial, and I have seen a decent amount of of Crucial playing. Um, yeah, I just I think he's a very limited orper. It, don't get me wrong; it's not as if he's not an orper that can drop thirty in a game. I think he is still capable of that, which is why I don't put him down here in the D tier. Uh, but yeah, just you know body of work and i think even his absolute peak tournament performance like you stick him in a katowice even on a better team and like i don't i don't think he's going to be doing all that oc um i'm gonna put him in the b tier um again I, he's kind of goes in this same sort of category i think he looks explosive very quick i think potentially the peak that we have seen maybe from him but this is in lower tier tournaments is kind of like an a tier peak but like i say he's mainly played kind of lower tier in general counter-strike we have yet to see him prove that he can be that explosive powerful performer at the top level so yeah oc for now beat it but i could see him just in terms of potential and skill like you know maybe with liquid he can prove that he deserves to be like up here somewhere yeah, Grass Faction, um, yeah, C tier. Never really was impressed by him, like, ever. Um, and yeah, I think his peak, again, is kind of on the level of these kind of orbs. I'd put him up here because he, he probably has just about enough of a body of work to kind of justify the idea that his peak tournament performance could be, like, better than someone like Snatchy or Crucial. But yeah, never was particularly impressed with Grass Faction as an orper. Um That's all I have to say, really. Jaquinio is going to be our first D tier. Yeah, he was pretty woeful during his time on Fnatic. Um, really just proved that he wasn't good enough for tier one. Um, you know, don't want to harp on on it. But yeah, guy is, guy is not like an incredible orper. JW, my man, was an absolute menace pre-orp movement speed nerf. And back when the CZ was a thing... Yeah, he was an absolute monster, JW. He would take over games on his own. He's proven it in the biggest tournaments, majors, etc., etc. Don't think you can argue with this. A very mercurial and inconsistent player, even at the absolute best of times. But like his peak tournament performances, we've seen it in the biggest events. He can go ham, um, or could go ham, I should say. Shout out to JW, important part of CSGO history and a fantastic player. Now, this is Zorte or Zorta or whatever of Forza. He's going at the very tippity top of my B tier. I really, really rate this guy, and I think you need to keep an eye on him. He is one who could get picked up by a bigger CIS organization in the future. Very, very talented. Amazing with the AWP. Good with an AK as well. Good with a Deagle. I think if you get him on, like, a, you know, a tier one team, give him a year. He could be somebody who I could see as Pete being an A tier. But from what I've seen of him so far on Forza, he's tippity top of my B tier. But really excited about Zorta. He is one to watch for the future. Could be like a, you know, a future top tier CIS Orpa. Next up, we have my boy Farlig joining Astralis. I'm going to just put don't know uh, because I'm thinking of his peak tournament performance. I haven't seen enough of Farlig. I have watched Farlig in the past, um, but he's never been on a team that's like super excited me. Uh, wasn't really all about that fun plus Phoenix, uh, obviously, that he was part of uh, and wasn't all that into the Godsent team that he was also a part of. Now that he's joined Astralis, no doubt I'm going to see a lot more of him in the near future. So I'll be able to get a gauge of him. But right now, just don't know. Next up is Junior. I'm really sorry, my guy Junior, but I, uh, yeah, what I have seen of Junior outside of anything that isn't like not good NACS has been fucking woeful. He's been pretty fucking poor pretty much any time I've seen him play in a game that's like even tier two or above, I would say. Yeah, just never been impressed with Junior. I think he's one of the things holding complexity back. Uh, and I would hazard a guess that Junior will not be playing for complexity in six months' time. Um, really liked the interview we gave with HLTV. Um, I recommend going and checking that out because it was a good interview. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I feel bad kind of slating the dude because he seems like a good dude. He was interesting. He had opinions and he wasn't afraid to voice them. I really respect that. But yeah, the level of play I've seen from him has, has not been great. So 
Sorry, Junior, mate. You're going in the D tier. Next up is Nico. Now, this is a bit of a meme, if anything, but I'm going to put Nico in the B tier. When Nico picks up the AWP, he really is not that great with it. He's not bad. He's actually like a serviceable tier one AWP, I think. And maybe if he like mained the weapon, he could get better. But um, yeah, stick to the rifles, buddy. When you do that panic AWPing thing, when you're not having a good game with the rifles, it, it almost is never a good look for you like yeah just just stop just don't just stick with the rifles you're fine you're serviceable as a tier one orper which you know is a pretty nice thing to have as a rifler to have that option for you and your team but just just yeah it only ever comes out when you're having a bad game and you're panicking stop orping nico all right you're the best rifler the game has ever seen probably so just just stick to those next up is shiro bam shiro's peak is s tier he is up there with Simple and Zewu when he has his best games. He just doesn't have them quite as often, particularly in terms of impact. Shiro pretty much always looks good statistically. I think sometimes he takes advantage of his role within the team uh, and kind of farms stats that way. Don't get me wrong. This isn't me saying Shiro is a beta or anything like that. His team uh, is set up around him pretty much as the star player. So obviously it's understandable that that's going to be the case. Even games where maybe he doesn't have as much impact as usual, he's still going to look good statistically. But yeah, like he's one of the best clutches in the game. His statistical output is insane. He was the fourth best player of last year. And I agreed with that kind of placement. Yeah, he's an S tier at his peak. Shiro is an incredible player. Um, in the next couple of years, I would not be surprised if he became the best player in the world. If Zewu continues to kind of fall off like he is, and if, for example, Simple has like a bad year, then Shiro, I would expect to be up there with someone like Nico battling for that number one spot. Um, Shiro's legit. Legit as fuck. Next up, we have Dumao, uh, who is Godsense Orp, but don't know. Just haven't seen enough of Godsense, and uh, I don't even know who, who this is. Um... Yeah, face is not speaking to me right now, but a couple more orpers to go in the don't know. Just haven't watched enough of them. Would not be fair for me to try and, and judge them. But the next up, we have Cadian. For me, Cadian goes to the top of C tier. I think Cadian is somebody who knows his limitations and plays within them very well. He is a serviceable tier one orper part of me wants to kind of put him at the bottom of b tier because we have seen pop off games from cadian and like his clutching ability is very good he's good in high pressure situations i think the problem is cadian is just severely limited as an orper i think in orp versus orp battles he struggles more often than not so i think his peak tournament performance when you get deep and you're playing against the simples and the sheroes and the brokies he's going to potentially get exposed and be a negative factor. He's going to be a reason Heroic are going to struggle to win these games, just in terms of the AWP versus AWP duel. Um, so yeah, Kadian goes at the top of my C tier, though, because I think for his limitations, he does very, very well within them and knows how to maximize himself. Uh, yeah, this is Maka of uh, LDLC, currently Falcons. Just don't have a clue, haven't really watched him. Chris J, uh, honestly, at his peak, is somewhere in the C tier. It's been long enough now that I can't remember enough Chris J games to say exactly where he is. But, like, it's not as if he couldn't potentially take over a game or two at Tier 1. It's just that I think it was very, very inconsistent. Maybe his absolute peak, like, a bit earlier in the game. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he's a B-tier orper. But from, from my memory, i just got to go on what I remember of Chris J. And he, again, was just kind of similar to Cadian in the sense he's a limited orper. Um, relied more on kind of decision-making and game sense rather than more skill and mechanics. And I think when that is the case, you're always going to be a little bit limited in sort of where your peak can be. Yeah, Chris J, not a bad player, but yeah. Elian. Uh, he's gonna kind of go in this, um, we'll put Nico up here just, just to keep these guys together because I think again, very similar, looks flashy, looks quick, looks good, farms those tier two and tier three teams against the tier one. Mm, yeah, not sold on it just yet, but I think Elian's peak 
is probably in this sort of realm. I think Alien is one of those big, big factors within Entropic where if he can get consistent against the best tier of opposition, that is what's going to push Entropic over the line and start to make them look like a really dangerous top 10 team who can go deep in tournaments maybe push for like a top five ranking i think he is the main i don't want to say issue because he's not a bad player he's not a problem but him not quite peaking against the best teams and not being his dominant carry self against the best teams is what i think holds entropic back from just stepping up into that next level Guardian, S tier. Um, I'm going to put him above Shiro. Oh, this is hard, actually. I'm not going to order the S tier, I don't think, except for probably putting Simple at the top of it. Um, the, you know, the rest of these are kind of roughly ordered in some sort of sense. Maybe Nico, you could kind of put anywhere in this pack, but like I'm putting him here because I want to keep these guys together. Um, but in general, this is kind of roughly ordered. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, yeah that's fine and then these don't matter um guardian just one of the best players to touch the game he was basically navi it was all built around him he was the guy back in the day when they were going deep making major finals winning tournaments being one of the best teams in the world it was on the back of guardian one of the og true carry orpers um absolutely iconic style as well of like slowly creeping taking map control all around guardians orp um yeah just an amazing player super super talented and um yeah i i remember guardian fondly great player to have in the scene henny my boy henny is going up here in this category of flashy fast inconsistent probably not quite elite elite in this sort of area of consistency and like ability to carry games and stuff not including nico like these guys and even zorta i think zorta is like a really really talented player and has a higher talent ceiling than i think these kind of players uh i'm gonna put Elian up here i'm gonna put oc ahead of poison i'm gonna put poison ahead of Cirque. so these guys are in the similar sort of category and are now i think ordered um, we've seen Henny do it. We've seen Henny do it in majors. We've seen Henny like just put in mad carry performances. But again, just inconsistent across the whole tournament. I can't back him to be at Searson or Shiro or whatever levels for a whole tournament. So yeah, this is where he goes. But a great player, very explosive, very exciting to watch. Uh, yeah, Yugi goes in D tier. Don't need to say much more. Just massively yeah unimpressed by yugi whenever i saw him play um he was like okay for a stint on heroic and then dined out on that for like two years kenny s bam the man whose tier list i berated kenny was just uh, an absolute phenom amazing to watch he's 40 bombing games for titan and still losing he some of the stuff he did with the orb in the early days of csgo was truly truly special can't underrate kenny s he was so fucking good raw skill and talent as well you know the antithesis of a device type orper who's very measured very cerebral very analytical almost in the way he approaches the game kenny s he was painting you a masterpiece when he was playing the game he was playing the game like an art form if device was playing the game like a science what a beautiful player to watch and um yeah sorry for ripping your tier list it was it was kind of shit though 